Today in All Guy Rides, we're going to be installing this winch on a Sportsman Touring 1000 XP. A couple of things have to happen here. First of all, the winch unit itself has to be installed, which is going to go down here, replacing this grill part in the front. Also, in addition, there's a connection unit, they call it the controller, that gets mounted inside that connects all of the various pieces of this unit. The handlebar connection, which is going to wind up mounting on the handlebar so that you can retrieve and extend the uh, winch using the handlebar. But also this unit comes with a remote control that allows you to stand to the side and remotely extend or retrieve your winch. The controller has to be installed underneath. We're going to be doing that. And then the uh, remote control can be installed or put in the, in the cabinet here or you can do whatever you want with it. You can screw it in somewhere. I wouldn't necessarily do that. But uh, we're gonna be installing all of these pieces today. So we have a fully functional winch and we'll go over how it works. First part of the installation is to be able to get to the battery because we're going to be disconnecting the battery. To do that, we unhook the front storage area, lift it up. Now inside here are two little clips. We bring the camera in so you can see these. Here's one here. You simply lift it up, and then the other side, same thing. Like that. Now, once you've done that, you should be able to lift this off very easily. And there it goes. Now, we're going to put this to the side. This gives us access to the battery. Come a little closer on the battery. Now, as you can see here, it's a bit congested. We're gonna to need to be opening some of this up. Now, clearly they always recommend disconnecting the black cables before you disconnect the red cables. So we're gonna be disconnecting that. In addition, during the installation, there are times when they want you to get to a couple of things in here. So we're gonna to have to be getting to that. There's a harness in here we have to connect to. Here's some parts off the main harness. We'll be using that. Here is the battery tender. We're gonna be disconnecting that and reconnecting that at the end. So let's begin, shall we? I mentioned that this was a connector in the main harness. It turns out this is a diagnostic connector. We will not be using that. The two little connectors we're going to be using are tucked up underneath here. Okay, those will be connecting to parts of what we'll be installing shortly. Okay, we've moved inside to uh, continue the installation here. And as you can see, we got the instructions. We got the top off for the battery. But the very first thing you do when doing an installation, especially for old guys, is make your place comfortable. So I've stolen some of these from my grandkids' uh, playroom here, those nice rubber mats. And that's what I'm gonna be using when I start to uh, undo some of the parts underneath and install the winch itself. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna be doing here is taking the battery off and always take off the black cables first. So if we lift this up here, we can see the black cables. These happen to be just done with a Phillips. So I'm gonna start in here. I am curious to see later, once this is all disconnected, if it undoes the control unit, because I've got the Bluetooth and the um, uh, dashboard unit connected. So we'll see if that undoes it, if you have to reset the time, repair your phone. So first thing we do is unconnect this. And you don't want to lose any of the connections that are here. You want to remember what's connected. Okay, set them aside. There's a brown one here, this black one here, and of course the main cable. The screw itself I'm going to put in this little dish up front here where it won't get lost. Take the power cable off completely and set it, as set it aside so that everything's out of the way right now for the installation. 
Now we'll come over to the red side. Obviously you access it slightly differently. Obviously here what I don't want to do is wind up dropping this screw. So as it comes out, it feels like it's out already. I want to get it out carefully because I don't want it to drop out and then have to go find it on the floor or somewhere in the engine bay. So once I started it, I did it by hand. You have all of these parts coming off. A lot of rings on this one. Okay. And save that on this side over here. And as you can see here, there is the tender. And there's also another controller. And this one, we're gonna put all of these, they're red. They go on the red side over there. So now the battery's disconnected. We can move on, everything's disconnected. We can move on to the actual putting on of the winch. Okay, there are four bolts holding this in place. Two are up here. On the videos they show you there are two more here, but not on this unit. The other two are inside here and are obviously much more difficult to get to. So we're gonna take the two top ones off first and. See what happens. There's a little extender so we don't scratch up the plastic at all. Maybe those two inner bolts are not even going to be needed, so. It might just be that this is held on by two bolts, not the four they show you in the installation video. That would make it a little bit easier because I don't want to get to the other two. They're way inside. It looks like that's a frame connection. And now that I'm down this low, I see some mud under here that needs to be cleaned off as well. Okay, so we get this off. We're going to take the whole unit off. Now on this unit, this piece right here is not going to be necessary. This part will be reinstalled later. So we're going to save that for later. And these two bolts here, I'm just going to start them here so they don't get lost and wind up somewhere else. But this piece won't be necessary anymore. Put that here. And here is where it's going to be mounted. So that's the next part. On the unit, there are several ties that are holding things together. This tie here, which just bunches up the wires, has to be cut and removed, as well as this one down here that holds this connector here. There is a tie underneath here that stays, that holds parts of the wires that connect from one part to the other. But the other two have to be cut to free up the wires for installation. So what we've got now here before installation is we freed up the black cable, the red cable here, this one which controls the return unit which is the automatic stop, and from the back here, this unit right here, okay? These will all be connected. They have to be free and when you install it out of the way so that they're not interfering with the installation. Now the next, the next part of this installation is going to be installing the unit into these four installation holes here. It comes with bolts that go into the unit. They have a, a bolt on the other side and it has Loctite on it to make it nice and secure. Now I brought a small screwdriver, which we'll see in a second why we're using that. Because as I lift this into place, it's fairly heavy. And I want to make sure that none of the wires that are in place are cramped or in the wrong place. Now, 
as I put it here, installing the screws would be very difficult. The small screwdriver is designed so when I place it in place, I can put the screwdriver through the hole and hopefully at least secure it in the top hole There it goes, it has to be a little higher than I had it. And at least secure it into the top hole so that I can start to get the screws in. There we go. The screwdriver is in place on this side holding it. Now what I'll need to do is put in the screws on each of the sides here and then that will help secure it into place. So right now it's just held in by the screwdriver. I want to make sure all the wires are loose. I'll check the one in the back in a second. And then we'll install the screws. There's a part that you did not see on this installation because I had to shut the camera off. It involved a lot of cursing and redoing. And, I, and I'll show you why. The unit wasn't as difficult as I thought, but the four bolts to mount it are hidden in the back. So you really can't see it. You can't get your head in there. You have to feel your way around. And that's not the hard part. The hard part is that there are cables coming out of there on that side. This is the easy one here, but on the back to the power cables. Now you have to get the power cables routed behind the radiator and up to here. Now I installed it with the cables being free. Here are the, here are the two cables here and here, the black one. I routed it with those cables being free and they wouldn't reach. I had to take the unit out, routed it again, take the unit out. After about the fourth try of getting those cables up in there, I figured out where the cables are supposed to go. They go directly into the back and then directly over the center of the radiator in the back, the fa radiator fan, and then they'll reach because there's not a lot of leeway there. So the cables are actually running almost over the fan, although the fan's got a shroud on it, so it's not like it's gonna hit the fan. And then there's enough cable. And now I've got all four bolts started down here in the bottom. And now I'll have to tighten them up. And then we can start the electrical connection part and putting in the other pieces. And hopefully it's a little bit easier than it was getting that. Getting that in place was not hard. Getting it in place with the cables in the right place was. Okay, all four bolts are now in place, holding it in. See if I can sneak in there so you can see it in the back. There are four bolts holding it in, two on each side. They're torqued down. Uh, 13 millimeter wrench is what was required to put them in and take the fascia off. Everything, everything seems to be 13 millimeter. The hard part, as I mentioned, was routing the cables. This one was easy. There were the two power cables, the red and black, that had to go up through the back. That was the hard part. And then to make sure that the couplings on the side here those two are both available because one was part of the uh, chassis and you had to make sure you weren't uh, jamming that in and the other one comes from the unit and is going to be connected to one of the connectors. So now that we've got all of that hardware installed, we've got the uh, made power cables routed, now comes the electrical part where we hook up all of the parts and pieces as well as the handlebar controls. So that comes next. The next part of this process here involves some of the electrical connections. Now you would think that these two connectors here get connected. That's not true. It probably is true with some of the more basic models, but with the one that has the uh, remote and the retractable, you've got to use this Y splitter that they give you. And what they tell you to do is first hook this up, and I'll assume it's this top fitting here up to that piece there, but I first got to take off the little cover on it and then I can hook it up. Okay, I've taken a little cover off of the connector from the uh, main harness of the, of the machine itself. And here's the Y connector. There was only one end that would have connected to that piece once I took the cover off. So it is now connected. And now we move to the rest of the connections. The next part of this installation involves hooking up this spider thing that they call a control box. And that has to be hooked up and mounted in here to that frame railing where it says Polaris. 
and then all the connections will be made not to this but to the other pieces that are in there so that's what we're going to do next and then we'll come back once it's mounted it gets mounted just using a zip tie and then we make connections okay now that we've hooked up the splitter one end of the splitter the only part that would connect to this connection here to the main harness the next part is in this funky looking spider thing which they call a control box the bottom part of the splitter will only fit into one of the connections here so the other one are some wires and this this is the only receptacle that will take this here so this we're going to make a connection right here just like that so now that is connected okay the next parts okay are to run these two cables up through the top and out to buy the battery but you do not connect them at this time okay this wire that came up from the control box what they call a control box has this ring end and a blade connector the blade connector connects to one of these two inserts for the blade connector which comes off the main harness uh, according to the direction, it doesn't matter which one you hook it up to, so I just picked the hardest one first to uh, save me the easiest one for later. They came with a little plastic shroud. I had to slice the shroud in order to get it to fit in there and then put it back. I'll probably throw a little electrical tape on that at the end of the installation. Okay, the one part that's not in the instructions, not on the video, and fortunately it is on the wiring chart, is the other half of the spider here that I originally routed up top doesn't get routed up top. That actually connects to the wiring that comes from the, uh, the stopper that stops it. Now, there's nothing in there other than the wiring chart which shows these get connected. It doesn't say in the instructions to do it. It's not on the video. So all I have to do now is determine how to route these wires to connect so that they're not interfering with anything. So I'm gonna crawl underneath, take a look, find an easy place to route them so that they're not in the way, not tangled, not getting caught on anything. And then all I have to do is uh, plug these in. So that'll be the next connection here. It's not on the instructions. They completely left it out, um, but it's obviously this won't work if this is not connected, but it does show it on the wiring chart. So we will be connecting these two. This is the remote control controller and it comes with a long wire that runs up to the battery and this connector here now they talk about mounting this to the end connector on the frame there's only one problem this unit doesn't have an end connector if we go under here and we look around there is no connector like in the instructions so the only place I'm going to be able to do this is to mount it up here in this area here this is the only one that seems to have a place where this will fit nothing back here where they showed in the instructions even exists like that so we're going to be mounting a little bit differently i'm going to need both hands and i won't be able to use the camera so we'll come back when it's mounted well after multiple tries of trying to find a place to mount that thing the one we found it's underneath here on the main part of the frame railing up a little higher than we'll be mounting the control box so we do have a spot in there we just zip tie it in we'll cut the zip ties and make it work better it's the only place where the cables would then reach everything they had to reach so a little bit of improvisation because it's not the same as the instructions but we got it securely mounted and we'll connect them up and tighten everything up shortly This video started out to be a step-by-step -step of how to hook up the winch. Um, it became more of a put the phone down and an awful lot of cursing. It's listed in the book as a 40 minute job. After four hours, it wasn't done. Now, let me explain what the hard parts were here. Actually physically putting the winch in place was not difficult. That was not hard with one exception. They talk about routing the wires, the main cables, up to the battery. However, nowhere in the instructions do they exactly tell you how. They took behind the fan. There are a lot of places back there that don't work. So a number of times I had to reroute 
the battery, <laughs> the cables from the winch up to the battery until finally I got the right one. They also have an awful lot of connections, which are not too bad if you look at the plans, it shows you what connects to what. That worked first time with me. I mean, we hooked it up, I've tested it, easy. The hard part was where to put the wires. That was difficult all the way through. There was an awful lot of, there was extra wires in some places, it was a little bit tight in other places, so it was very difficult to do. Um, you had to get creative, you had to bind a lot of wires, you want to get them out of the way so they're not on moving parts in the suspension or hitting the fan. Uh, so there was, it was difficult to get everything back into place and get all the wires where they were supposed to go. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of what we had to do there. Um, the connections and the instructions are all correct. The mounting of various components, the, like the remote uh, module and the, and the control module, uh, they show you that on a different model ATV, and on mine, it wasn't in the same place. So I had to get creative on how to mount them, and hopefully that worked out all right. I hope there won't be a problem down the line. Everything does work, so we're in good shape there. But I did have to get creative with where to put certain things, and I'm going to show you some of that stuff right now. Okay, here at the battery, and I haven't closed it up yet, haven't buttoned it up yet, put the front fascia on or anything. There was an extra, a lot of connections. The, the connections, a lot of them went to the negative cable, which again, you're supposed to do last, okay? There was only one addition to the positive cable here, one red wire from the winch up here. The other cables, uh, there were two of them from the control box. I mean, one from the control box, one from the remote box, and then one from the winch all got added onto the negative here. And then there was like a ton of extra wires, which I bound together, put a uh, strap on, and stuffed them down in front here. Now, they didn't say to put them here. In fact, they said bind them up underneath. Uh, but that is a bit of a problem too, and I'll show you that. Okay, this is under the left front suspension area. And there you can see a ton of extra wires and connectors that had to be bound up and try to get out of the way. You obviously don't want to involve the brake cable there. You, you, know, you know, you can be around it, but you don't want to bind to it. And uh, it was just very difficult to get that in the proper place and then get all the wires bound up. I used a number of different uh, pull ties. There were wires in the back going to the control module, which we had to mount all the way up in there. Uh, which was almost impossible to get to, and that's also done by pull ties through holes that were there. There was no component N on the frame that was on the model that they were doing the work on, so it was a little bit difficult to do, and uh, we finally got it done, but it took several hours and experimentation to get it to be where the wiring was where I wanted to get to go. This is what the winch looks like from the front. Okay, and this is without the fascia back on yet. We'll put that on shortly as well as the top. Here is the side of it. Now this part right here is interesting because this has different gears. Now what I mean by that is this. This is low. This is typically what you use it for when you're winching and pulling something. If your cord is free, you can go all the way to H, okay, and that's high. That'll be the fast, you know, retract. You should not put any load on this when you're doing that. It should be just free cable pulling it in fast. Now, to get the cable to come out, probably the best way to do it is in the middle, N for neutral. That allows you to just pull the cable out as long as the uh, uh, ignition is on. Just pull the cable out to the desired length. It's probably the quickest way to do it without feeding it. And then from there you set it over to low, which is where you probably should keep it all the time because this is what you're going to be using to pull stuff back in. You can, using the out switch, make it come out and it'll be very slow. And you can use the high speed one, it'll be very slow. It's just easier if you're pulling out to go in neutral. The other thing that was a bit difficult, and I think it had more to do with the specific installation here, the handlebar switch was not as easy as advertised. And part of the problem was that on this one here, on this unit, it has a mirror. The mirrors get installed at the dealership. Well, when I finally went to put this in, there was not enough room here between this switch and the brake <laughs> to insert this. So I had to disconnect and loosen the mirror. Then I had to loosen this, wedge them out a bit, which was not easy. 
until this fit perfectly, and then I could put this in and screw it in. Now, underneath, the wire comes out of there. It's right there. And I twist tied it to here. There's a connector here. That was the easy part. But you have to be careful when the wire is coming out that it doesn't crimp itself, because there's another issue there with the wire being crimped. So it was just another area where the instructions told you to do it, but it wasn't quite as clear as it should be. So the installation's complete. I tested it both with the uh, switch and with the remote. It seems to work properly. And now that it's worked properly and I've tied up all the wires, I'm gonna button it up and then we'll take a look at it later. We finished the installation of the winch. We reinstalled the brush guard, which wasn't there before. And we actually powder, uh, we painted it with the uh, plaster dip in white and the lower part of the front guard around was black when we took it off. It's also been turned to white. So now we're gonna test out the winch and show you how it works. Okay, here's the remote control. In order to turn it on, you just hold the bottom, bottom button here for a few seconds and the light should go on at the top. There you go. And then you've got the in and the out. Obviously for out, you're just gonna set it to neutral on the winch on the side and then just pull the rope. But for retracting it here, I've got it on low, so it'll go slowly. And you can see how it retracts very easily. When it comes up and that stopper gets close, the magnet in there shuts it off automatically. Uh, if you set it to H high, all it does is do that a little bit faster. For retracting, you almost always are just gonna put it in neutral. You can shut this off by just holding this, or if you leave it, I think after three minutes, it automatically shuts itself off. So now it's off. So there we go, the winch works perfectly. I've tested it on the handlebars, used it in a remote. I've actually used it out in the pasture and it works just the way it's supposed to.